Hello, my name is Dr. Judy Bowie. I'm an assistant professor of surgery in the Department of Surgery here at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. My area of specialty is surgery for breast cancer. And today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about neoadjuvant chemotherapy. We use neoadjuvant chemotherapy, which is giving chemotherapy prior to surgery for those patients that tend to have slightly more aggressive tumors or larger tumors or those that involve the lymph nodes. If you're watching this video, it may well be that you fit these criteria and are considering having your chemotherapy before surgery. And I'd like to cover some of the key points about why you may want to consider this approach. In the past, we used to always perform surgery first, be that a lumpectomy or a mastectomy, and then depending on what we found pathologically, the medical oncologist would determine whether chemotherapy was given in the adjuvant setting, meaning after surgery. Nowadays, if we know at the time when you are initially diagnosed with breast cancer that it will be recommended that you receive chemotherapy, there are several advantages to giving that chemotherapy prior to proceeding to the operating room. It's really important to understand that we would never consider giving a patient neoadjuvant chemotherapy if we didn't think that if we went to the operating room first, they could get away without needing chemotherapy. The patients that we identify for giving chemotherapy in the neoadjuvant setting are those with more aggressive disease, such as those that have grade three tumors when their tumor is examined histologically, those tumors that are triple negative so that they do not express estrogen or progesterone receptor and do not overexpress the HER2 gene, those tumors that are HER2 positive that are amplified for the HER2 new gene, and those patients that have larger tumors or tumors involving the lymph nodes and also women who are diagnosed with breast cancer at a young age. If you have one or several of these factors, it is likely that chemotherapy is gonna be part of your treatment and that we may wanna consider giving chemotherapy before proceeding to the operating room. I know at this point you're probably feeling very nervous and having been recently diagnosed with breast cancer, many women feel, I just want to get to surgery and I just wanna have this tumor removed. But the truth is, one of the things that we're the most concerned about is the potential for anything to just spread anywhere else. So why not start with the systemic treatment, the treatment that hits the bloodstream and minimizes the risks of anything developing elsewhere in the body first, and then coming to the operating room later down the path when we can still always resect the tumor that's in your breast. Some of the advantages of giving chemotherapy before surgery is that it enables both you your medical oncologist and your surgeon to see how your specific tumor is responding to the chemotherapy that you are receiving. If we go to the operating room first and we remove all the disease, then there is no disease in your body at the time that we proceed with the chemotherapy. And so it's very hard to tell which individual patient actually benefited from the chemotherapy they are receiving. Where else, if the tumor is in your breast while you are receiving the chemotherapy, we can actually watch that tumor shrink and see how it is responding to the drugs that you are receiving. This also in turn may improve some of the potential surgical options that you have for resection of your tumor. If your tumor is on the bigger side and requires a mastectomy, there is the potential that with shrinkage with the neoadjuvant chemotherapy, that when we do get to the operating room, you may become a candidate for breast conservation surgery allowing you to undergo just a lumpectomy and preserve the remainder of your breast. Obviously, this will depend on the size of the disease when you first are diagnosed and also how the disease responds to chemotherapy. Studies have shown that people who have involved lymph nodes, about 40% of those, or even higher in more recent studies, will convert to being lymph node negative with the use of chemotherapy. Additionally, many clinical trials look at the use of chemotherapy in the neoadjuvant setting, and so it is also a platform to consider novel drug developments and participating in clinical trials. To summarize some of the key points about neoadjuvant chemotherapy, the first is we would not consider giving you chemotherapy prior to surgery if you did not need chemotherapy, and so you would not be receiving any different chemotherapy or longer course of chemotherapy than you would if you went to the operating room first for surgery and then had your chemotherapy as the second portion of your treatment. Secondly, it may improve your surgical treatment options. Thirdly, you're more likely to have negative lymph nodes when you get to the operating room. 
And last but not least, it allows you and your physician to see the response of your individual tumor to the drugs that you individually are receiving. If you proceed with chemotherapy in the neoadjuvant setting, you would start on your chemotherapy over the next couple of weeks and would be on chemotherapy on average for about four to six months. After your last dose of chemotherapy, we usually give you about a four to six week window to recover before we proceed to the operating room. It will be important as we make this decision for you to reflect on your preferences and to also discuss this with your medical oncologist who can talk to you a little bit more about the potential drugs that would be used and the side effects related to those drugs. During your chemotherapy, you'll be watched by your medical oncologist to see the response that your tumor and that you are having to the chemotherapy. And then you would meet back with the surgical team after the completion of your chemotherapy to repeat the imaging of your breast to see how your tumor has shrunken down and to plan your surgical plans. I really thank you for taking the time to listen to this video and watch this today. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact your breast surgeon and your medical oncologist to discuss any of these issues further.